far in the first quarter. Riley Ferguson, the pitch to Daryl Henderson. We talked about turnovers a lot, Corey. We knew it was going to be important today. Fumbled and recovered by Shaquem Griffin. Well, Shaquem Griffin, look at the pursuit angle that he takes. Uh, his energy as a football player, second to none. You can see him right there trying to, he really just pulls this ball away from Henderson late. And that's a lot about just grit as a player. Yeah, and then you see it, Milton to Dredrick Snelson, a 24-yard touchdown pass. The Knights are going to get started early in this game. A fast start for UCF, up 7 to nothing here in the first quarter. And what a performance by Snelson. I think late in the season, he's even taking his game to another level. And you see him beat Jonathan Cook in the slot. Cook had a problem today in coverage. And here you see Anderson, the 62-yard rushing touchdown. Starting on the Memphis 20, this would lead to a 31-yard field goal. UCF up 10-0, six plays, 80 yards that drive. It was looking like UCF might run away with this one at this point in the first quarter. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was going to be important for Memphis to get its running game going. And you can see they get it going right here. They, that was something they didn't get going the first time these two teams played. UCF up 10-0 in the first quarter. This play, second and eight on the Memphis 37. Taylor, the rushing touchdown. It was funny, on that play, you almost had the quarterback, Wiley Ferguson, fall down. He barely got the handoff to Taylor. Excellent red zone runner. You're going to see them go off tackle. And one of the things that they do quite a bit is run to that left side. Pretty good block by Kaiser up front. Well, here you see it. UCF up 10 to 7. Milton to Aikens, 48 yard touchdown. He's been a big wide receiver for this group all season long, Corey. Yeah, he has. I mean, former baseball player, professional baseball player. He's played wide receiver for this team. Back in the day at UCF, he used to return kicks. And this, once again, Mackenzie Milton finding the matchup. This against their freshman safety, Josh Perry. Perry falls down in coverage. Touchdown, Knights. Well, here's an interesting play, Corey. First quarter, the clock is winding down. Memphis is going to run this play. The UCF defense, they look like they're set, but they're not really set. They get some big yardage on this play. Ferguson to Dykes, 64 yards. The quarter's going to end here. It's going to be followed by a Memphis score. Well, here we are, second quarter. Ferguson to Tony Pollard. We, we call his name a lot on special teams, but here he is playing his role at receiver. A 13-yard touchdown pass. UCF leads cut 17 to 14. Interesting strategy that time because they moved him again into the backfield. You see him offset and one on one. He ends up with Titus Davis. Their outside linebacker beats him on the H angle. Perfect throw by Ferguson. Third and three on the 50. Milton, Traquan Smith, 50 yard touchdown run. Corey, I know you like this wide receiver. He's talented, he's skilled, and we felt his impact today. Uh, I really like the fact that he's a long strider who builds speed and I like the way Scott Frost and also Troy Walters move him around. They put him in the slot one-on-one. -on -one. Jonathan Cook, it's a mismatch. Cook has struggled against receivers in the slot. UCF took advantage. Well, here we are. UCF up 24 to 14. First and 10 on the UCF 20. Milton again to Snelson. Snelson fumbles the ball. A turnover for UCF. Recovered by Denard Avery for Memphis. A uh, big turnover right there for the Tigers. Yeah, six foot one, 265 pounds. Avery is a man amongst boys oftentimes. And watch Avery come in here along with Cook, and you see him punch and rip. He's a grown man. You'll see him on Sunday afternoons. Yes, we will. One of several Memphis players that we might be seeing on Sundays, Corey. Second and nine on the UCF 30. Daryl Henderson, 30-yard touchdown rush, showing some fight, breaking through those UCF defenders. Yeah, one thing about Henderson, he has big league speed. He's a guy that once he gets to the second level of your defense, he's a challenge. He's a little bit smaller, but he's strong in the lower body. You can see Trey Neal try to come up and tackle, and he works through that tackle. One thing about Henderson, all year long, he's gotten stronger as the season has gone on. Well, he got the job done today, but here we are, second and 10 on the Memphis 11. Milton picked off by Tito Windham. Second consecutive UCF turnover. Turnovers were something that UCF struggled with in the first half. Yeah, and I think this was a, a good play design. They actually was kind of a follow type concept, and it just went off the hands of the receiver, and Wyndham was in the right place at the right time.
here we are. Here's another look at it. Big time turnover. All right, here we are, second and eight on the Memphis 32. We've called this duo quite a bit this season as well. Riley Ferguson to Anthony Miller, 68-yard touchdown run. Memphis takes the lead, 28 to 24. Five plates, 97 yards. Well, I think one thing that Ferguson does, similar to Paxton Lynch when he was in school, this is a double-move concept, a little bit of a slant and go, and you get in one-on-one with the corner outside. Clark, who's a good cornerback for UCF, but Miller, savvy route runner. We're still only in the second quarter here. These highlights are going on forever. <laughs> second and goal on the Memphis Six. Milton pass picked off by T.J. Carter, the rookie of the year. He returned that 25 yards, the third straight UCF turnover. Yeah, Carter does a pretty good job outside at playing man-to-man. -man. He comes off of his man on the, I think that might have even been going to the slot receiver. You can see him down at the bottom. He comes off his man and actually does a pretty good job of just reacting to tips and overthrows. That's how you get inter interceptions. Well, here we are nearing the end of the first half. Second and four on the Memphis 31. Riley Ferguson to Dykes, 46 yards to the UCF 23. You see him fighting there, Corey. Yeah, well, he's got a matchup this time against Shaquan Burkett, and he gets up the seam and makes a pretty good move on Neil. All right, last highlight of the, the first half, third and 10 on the UCF 13. Time running out in the second quarter in the third quarter. Memphis onside kick, kind of an unusual play to start the half, but I guess they were feeling it on special teams, trying to catch UCF by surprise, but UCF recovered the ball. Well, I mean, they, they did actually convert an onside kick the first time these two teams played. I thought that was a reason they went back to it. All right, well, here's Mackenzie Milton, a six-yard touchdown run to tie the game at 31 here in the third quarter. Knights fans, they were really loud today, but this, this got UCF on the right foot here in the second half. And I think he got Milton going again. Now, he hadn't had a lot of yards rushing up to that point. He had 88 yards the first time these two teams met. And you can see it's just a quarterback draw. And what he does is a great job of really reading off the block of Brown, making a quick move, and being heady with his decision making. Well, tied at 31, here's Riley Ferguson to Dykes again. 52 yards to the UCF 23. Big game there by the Tigers. This is going to lead to a 22-yard field goal. Memphis is going to take the lead back 34-31. UCF with the ball now. Mackenzie Milton. Who does he find? Traquan Smith. 34-yard touchdown. UCF takes the lead back 38-34. to This is just like, you know, going points for points, back and forth, man. Again, you get a linebacker matched up, Darian Porter, with Smith down the field. And they lost that safety that I talked about in the first half, Josh Perry. And now you got Porter one-on-one -on -one with Smith. You'll take that matchup every time, and he dunks on it. Well, I think this was kind of a turning point, um, if you would agree, Corey, in the third quarter, because here he is, Mackenzie Milton. He's going to find Frederick Snelson, a 28-yard touchdown. And now UCF has taken the largest lead of the game, 45-34. to Milton's fifth touchdown pass today. Four plays, 85 yards. Yeah, and that, that was a, a, a pretty good de defense that time by Wyndham, who had a pretty good game. And just a minute ago, I said that it was uh, Porter that got beat. Actually, it was Gonzalez for Memphis. But again, another Memphis defensive back getting matched up uh, down the field. Wyndham, who actually had his best, probably maybe his best game of the season, gives up the score. Well, here we are in the fourth quarter, 45 to 34, Ferguson sacked by Shaquem Griffin, an eight-yard loss, the senior getting this crowd going at that point. And right now, it seems like UCF had all the momentum. 46-yard field goal for the Tigers to chip away at the deficit, but they missed it. Yeah, and that was something to keep an eye on because coming into the game, Patterson's long on the year was 42 yards. So you just wondered whether or not he would be able to be a factor in this game if, they, if it came down to a field goal. Well, at this point, you're kind of wondering, is UCF the nightmare? There you see it. Going to run away with this one. But he's been a difference maker all year long. Tony Pollard, 66-yard rushing touchdown to get Memphis back within seven points. And you're like, okay, Tigers are getting back in this one. UCF only leads 48-41 to 41 at this point. And if he gets on the edge, he turns back into that kick returner. 
averaging 44 yards per kick return. Outruns the angle of Trey Neal and is able to beat him. And once you get past that safety's angle, you'll see it right here. It's a good block by Taylor on Shaquem Griffin. And then he beats the angle of Neal. And there's that speed that we've been talking about all afternoon. Yeah, Tony Pollard, we talk about him a lot on special teams, but big, big, day, big game today, rather, at the receiver position. But here we are, score remains UCF 48, Tigers 41. UCF goes for it on fourth down from their own 35-yard line and converts, but that drive did eventually end with their first punt of the day. Here's Ferguson to Pollard, 29 yards to the UCF 39. Here you see it again. I mean, he really found Pollard quite a few times today. He did. He found a lot of the matchups again against Davis, Titus Davis, an outside linebacker. You don't want him matched up with Pollard. And now, in the end zone, you're going after their best corner, Mike Hughes. And Miller says, it's Miller time. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you see him, Anthony Miller. That was a 10-yard touchdown pass. This is going to tie the game at 48. And you're, we're in the fourth quarter. Man, uh, what a great catch by Anthony Miller. It was, and it was excellent coverage by Hughes, but sometimes you've got to give your best player a chance on a 50-50 ball, and that was 100% touchdown Tigers. Well, third and one on the UCF 42. Anderson stopped behind the line of scrimmage. UCF forced to punt. This is a big turning point in the game. This is going to put the ball in Memphis's hands, and I mean, at this point, it was kind of the Tigers' game to lose. It was a big stop by Pat Jasinski who actually had 13 tackles on the game. And then there's Henderson again, busting loose. Another 100-yard game for Henderson. Well, Henderson with a 36-yard rush to the UCF 25. It's going to set up the field goal. 46-yard field goal, but another delay of game, so he gets another chance. And now you're tinkering with outside of his range. you got to take this back to a 51-yard field goal, and then you get him pushing it wide left. Well, Patterson, you mentioned it, missed the 51-yard Field goal game stays tied at 48. We're going to overtime. Here it is. Ferguson to Miller for the 15-yard touchdown. Memphis leads 55 to 48 in the first overtime. You know, at this point, I was wondering how many overtimes <laughs> we were maybe going to be here for this afternoon. But UCF, you know they're going to respond. They've been bringing it all year on offense. Tillens Jr., the two-yard touchdown run. We're tied at 55, going into double overtime. Well, he makes Hall make a decision one-on-one, -on -one, and then he pitches it at the last minute. Killens delivers, and they're celebrating like it's hammer time. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are in double overtime. UCF has the ball second and goal on the Memphis one. Anderson with the one-yard touchdown run. We kind of had a pause. UCF fans were waiting for confirmation on the touchdown, but sure enough, there it is. UCF leads 62-55. to 55. And the last time I, I heard of Otis Anderson in a championship game, it was way back in Super Bowl 25 with the New York Giants. O.J. Anderson with <laughs> Otis Anderson for the Knights getting it done today. What an afternoon for the young man. Well, here we are, fourth and seven on the UCF 22. They need seven yards to keep the championship hopes alive for the Memphis Tigers. They get it. Ferguson to Miller for 17 yards to the UCF 5. But here it is. This ended the game right here. Ferguson picked off by Trey Neal. And UCF is your 2017 American champion, remaining unbeaten on the season at 12-0. Look at those fans celebrating. You know what? They really brought it today. This is a packed house again. I mean, I couldn't believe this place, Corey. It was loud. The stands were shaking. They don't call it the bounce house for no reason. But there you see him, Scott Frost, a really emotional afternoon here as he hugs all of his players. I mean, he just said it on our set. Like, if you would have asked him this question, Back in September, if this team would be 12-0, he would have said, you know, no way. Wouldn't, couldn't have imagined this happening to this team. Well, I, I think one thing that we talked about during the pregame show was the fact that all you heard about in the preseason was USF and how they were going to have a perfect season. And if you think about the last game of the 2016 season, nobody competed with USF any better than UCF. So they, they had to be thinking, like, wait a minute. You're in our division. you got to get through us first. And not only did it come down to a last-second kick return by Mike Hughes in that game, it kind of like set up what we would, what this championship game really would come down to, really the two best teams in the conference. 